Please turn your attention to the word provided by Dr. King. Praise the Lord. Every head bowed as we go to the Lord in prayer. Everyone standing. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the love. Hallelujah. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise your name. Lord, we celebrate the love that God has expressed through his son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord. You could have come off that cross, but you didn't. Love restrained you to stay there. Hallelujah. The love for each one of us. Lord, we thank you for the sacrifice. We thank you because of the love. And we thank you, Lord, that you love us with an everlasting, eternal love. Help us, Lord, as we are here on today to learn how to reciprocate, to give you love, to return love, to give it back, to love on you, Father. So, God, we ask for revelation knowledge. Have your way. God, speak by the power of the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus. Transform us, God. Revive us. Regenerate us. Renew us in the name of Jesus that we might be used for your glory. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Thank God. Come on, put your hands together. Give the Lord a praise. While you're still standing, the text should have been on. The scripture is coming out of Mark, and I'm going to ask that you would just read along with me. That's Mark, the 16th chapter. And just a few scriptures, starting at verse 14, it says, Later he appeared to the eleven as they sat at the table, and he rebuked them, their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And he said to them, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. They will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. We thank God for the reading. Just give the Lord a praise. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. We thank God for Jesus and thank God for you on today, this week after the resurrection. And we're looking at a time in which we are getting close to the ascension. But Jesus, there was 50 days between his resurrection and ascension, but he's concerned here on this day. We talked about... Uh, Last week, the state of the saints or the disciples after the resurrection, uh, after the crucifixion. And, uh, and so we have a story being told to us, again, from Mark's perspective. And uh, as I think about the church and I think about what we're facing too often because we are believing the wrong thing or uh, not trusting in what uh, the Word of God says. It causes us to move in the wrong directions and doing the wrong thing. I'll say that again. We have to walk by faith and not by sight as we're trusting and standing on the Word of God. Amen? And, um, you know, there's three things that I was sharing with a group of um, brothers on Thursday. I had about 50 men that we were ministering to, and I was uh, at their Bible study at Restoration Ministry. They're recovering um, addictions, whether it's drug or alcohol or whatever it might be. And uh, I, I love the plan that Restoration Ministry uses. They bombard the brothers and the sisters. Uh, it's Lydia House for the sisters, and they bombard them with the Word of God. And um, and so as I shared with them that there's three things that really uh, seek to challenge us, three areas in our faith and our walk with the Lord uh, and trusting the Lord. 
And one is the world culture. I don't have a PowerPoint for this, but just uh, you could write it down. But it's the world's culture. The world, that's why in the book of 1 John, God says, love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man has a love for the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And the world has its own structure, which is the opposite of the structure that God has set up for his believers, his children. It's a whole different way of thinking and a whole different belief system that's contrary to the word of God. And so uh, we get it uh, when we are thrust out of our homes and we go to school. And uh, one of the first things I remember uh, being in high school and uh, before high school, I was uh, always taught that creation began with God speaking. And God said, let there be. Amen? Well, when I took my biology class, it shocked me that my biology teacher was teaching me that uh, creation came from a single cell amoeba that came out of this primordial abyss that some kind of way beached itself and then became eventually over time a primate that then became a man. And I said, God created. Well, needless to say, I was struggling in biology. I did get through it, hallelujah. But it was barely getting through. But I was a thorn in my teacher's side. But the world system is different and apart from the word of God and the system that God has for his children and his kingdom. So the world uh, causes us to struggle in our areas of faith. Our flesh causes us to struggle in the flesh. And uh, we are moved by our emotions. And so whether it's fear or frustration or anger or lust or covetousness, uh, whatever we are seeing, our flesh many times gets in the way of us walking by faith. So the world culture, the flesh, and then the third area that we have to be aware of, it's the devil himself. Uh, the Bible lets us know that he comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Uh, and so in the, uh, in the garden, we see that uh, two of the three points that I gave you were operating. The flesh, as Eve saw the fruit and that it was good, to make one wise, she wanted to uh, eat of it. Uh, but also Satan comes in the form of the serpent and deceives uh, both Adam, uh, or I should say Eve and Adam responds accordingly. And so we've got to be aware that church, we're in a battle, amen? We're in a battle, three-pronged battle. And we cannot take it lightly. Sometimes we take things a bit too lightly. And uh, we don't take the spiritual battle serious, seriously enough. Jesus, wanting his disciples to excel in the spiritual realm, because when you have victory in the spiritual realm, it manifests itself in the physical realm. But if you have no victory in the spiritual realm, you will not have, you can't anticipate having victory in the physical realm. That's why it is so important for us to fast and pray. Jesus said to the disciples that were looking for a manifestation, a spiritual victory, and they were wondering what in the world, why? And Jesus was saying, in essence, you haven't put enough spiritual equity in this thing. These devils, some devils don't come out by anything but fasting and prayer. Somebody give the Lord a praise. But see, you know, our flesh gets in the way and we say, Lord, it's too long for me to pray or too early for me to pray and I'm too hungry or how they say hungry. I'm too hungry to fast. But in the text, Jesus uh, on that first day meets Mary and Mary Magdalene 
and she was at the tomb in the grief mode, weeping over the death of Jesus. Uh, but Jesus was alive. It's something. It seemed as if they preferred to believe that he was still dead as opposed to the message that he said that he was going to, after three days, uh, be resurrected. And sometimes we, uh, we're just, just as guilty uh, we will hold on to bad news instead of holding on to a word, a prophetic word, a prophetic word that God wants to do a miracle. We'll want somebody to explain, well, just how is a miracle going to work out? When, when you do that, then you know you're walking by sight. Come on. Uh, we, we've got to be individuals that believe whatever the Lord said. Whose report shall you believe? I will believe the report of the Lord. So when come, somebody comes with some sad, bad news, uh, you say, well, and, and you don't even have to tell them. You just can say, I'm going to believe the Lord. Jesus had given them a word that he was going to uh, return, and he wanted his disciples to, to remember that there was power in his name. Uh, it, it grieved him that they were emotionally, physiology, uh, or psychologically, uh, they were just, if you will, still in that debt or that uh, grief mode. But the Lord wanted them to understand that this was not the time to give up or to give in. And so we find that Jesus shows up, if I can pick up uh, at verse 12, it says, after that he appeared in another form to two of them, we talked about this on last week, as they walked and went into the country, and they went and told it to the rest, watch this, verse 13, but they did not believe them either. So they didn't believe the women, and they didn't believe the two that were on the world uh, walking with Jesus and hearing Jesus' report. And so, and by the time we get in verse 14, uh, Jesus now, instead of appearing to the women or appearing to a fraction of the brothers, he appears to 11 of the disciples. We know that uh, one of them wasn't there because he was dead by this time. Judas he had gone out and hung himself because he had betrayed Christ. So Jesus appears at the table with the 11. And what does he do? It's instead of even saying hello, you know, you know he pops up it. You would think that he'd say, hey, fellas. You would think that it would be a time of uh, celebration, excitement. But Jesus shows up deliberately, intentionally to the 11 as they're sitting around the table and eating, and he rebukes them. Wow. I think King James says he upbraided them. Wow. He rebuked their unbelief and hardness of heart. Two things. So their unbelief, their lack of faith. They didn't believe his words, his prophetic words before the cross. And, uh, and they had every right to believe. Before he left, he had turned the water into wine. He had spoken to the winds and the waves and said, peace be still. He had uh, healed uh, Lazarus, and, or if you will, brought him from the dead. Uh, he had healed the, the man that they dropped for Lord from the roof. He uh, had given sight to the blind and, and talked to the lame man and told them to get up and walk. And so fed the 5,000 and fed the 4,000. He had given proof after proof that what he was said, what, what came out of his mouth was true. He was the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus rebuked their lack of faith. They would not believe his words. You know what, if there's anything, I, I'm going to tell you, church, because we're sitting up here, we're like, 
powder kegs in here. Uh, there's some explosion with explosives in here. You just don't know how much explosive power you've got. If you're born again in Jesus, listen, and so what happens is, but, but listen, uh, what sets off the, the powder keg, what sets off the explosion is faith. Everything is all there. The dynamite is all there to, to disrupt things when you come in, but if you don't think that you've got the anointing or the power or the authority to go in and see change, then change won't happen. I'm going to say that again. If you don't believe what God has put in you called the anointing by the power of the Holy Ghost, if you don't believe that you can walk into a place and just because you are the anointed child of God and you can call on the name of the Lord, if you don't believe that you can make a difference, then nothing will happen. But if you believe... If you believe that the Lord has an anointing on your life and wherever you go, God is with you and you can call on the power and the authority of God Almighty and things will happen. Somebody ought to give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. How many in here believe they've got an anointing of God? How many in here believe you make a difference? Come on, somebody ought to be standing on their feet and saying, I'm one of them. Praise the Lord. We've got to deal with that unbelief. From time to time, we, ha we yes, we wrestle with it. I know we wrestle with it, but this is what. But we've got to get over it. Meaning there comes a point in time as you're wrestling with your faith that you've got to make a decision. What side are you going to be on? Am I going to be on the side of unbelievers and unbelief and just say that this is too incredulous, it's too incredible, it's just I, just, I just don't see how it's going to happen? Or are you going to be on the side of the believer that says, I can do all things through Christ that gives me the ability to do it? There's nothing too hard for... Somebody give the Lord a praise. And particularly, particularly if you've been walking with the Lord for any length of time, what in the world we have in church for? There ought to be a difference in, in, in your walk. There ought to be a difference in your talk. There ought to be a difference on your workplace, your job. There ought to be a difference in your home. I ought to be able to sense my anointing ought to click with your anointing when I'm walking with you. Hallelujah. I, we, listen, we are men and women of, on destiny, of destiny, of purpose. And so even when we're moving, we're moving and we're going, we're just praying, God, just have your way. Use me on today, God. Let your, your spirit just, just flow in me and you be glorified in the name of Jesus. And God, wherever we go, we rebuke the enemy. The same resurrection power that brought you out of the grave, that resurrection power exists in me right now. I thank you, Lord, for the anointing of God. I thank you for the power of God. And I thank you that I can cast the enemy out I don't know about you but I'm just sick of the devil tell your neighbor I'm sick of the devil tell your neighbor on the other side you I'm sick of the devil I'm sick of the devil sick of the devil but you know what he don't mind if we're just sick of him, but we don't have no power. But what, what, what intimidates the enemy is when we're sick of him and we got the power and the authority to throw him out. So we can come into some places and, and just sense, it's called discernment, sense that the enemy has been too busy. And we say, no, we're going to bind this stuff in the name of Jesus. We're binding the demonic, we're binding in the name of, and we're casting that stuff out of here. God, you be glorified in this place. You be lifted up in this place. Hallelujah. We're going to be out of here in just a minute, but hallelujah. 
but I'm sick of the devil. Hallelujah. And so Jesus, wanting his disciples, these are the same disciples that he sent out two by two, and they were able to bind, hallelujah, they were able to see the sick be healed. They came back rejoicing, Lord, this is what we did in your name. These are the ones that are struggling with unbelief. The question is, how much more does the Lord have to do uh, for us to land on the right side of belief. What else? Are we going from miracle to miracle? You know, there was a miracle you waking up this morning. There was another alternative. I say it all the time. You didn't have to get up this morning, but Lord, I'm, I'm glad I did. Hallelujah. And because I did, I know I've got more work to do for the Lord. It's not just me going to a job. No, I'm on assignment. Tell your neighbor you're on assignment. I'm on assignment. And so the Lord is rebuking the disciples. He's rebuking the followers of Christ. He's rebuking these men and these women who have walked closely with them because they should have at this point known better. And when you know better, you do better. But you know what? I love it. You, you can tell. You can tell when somebody's really following you. you uh, because Jesus could rebuke them, and they didn't give him uh, uh, a heretofore. Jesus, who you think you are coming back here? No, they didn't do that, did they? No. But, but look at here. He rebukes them uh, for two things. Their unbelief and their, then it says, their hardness of heart. The, the Greek there is this stubborn refusal. This hardness, this stubborn refusal. Uh, despite evidence. Watch this. Hardness of heart. The heart being a vital area and this stubborn refusal to allow anything that was life changing to get to that heart that would revitalize it and cause them to be renewed and refreshed and be going in a new direction. They were blocking it. Having a spiritual heart attack. Jesus rebukes them. He says here, because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. And so the Lord says, listen, I have given you evidence. I've given you evidence by testimony. I've given you evidence by visual witness. I've given you evidence in multiple times. I've given you evidence through angelic announcement. And you still are acting as if I am dead. You all are still grieving as if I have not been, as if my body has just been lost or stolen. But you refuse to believe the other that I actually am alive. And so here I am now, and he says to them, verse 13 or 15 and he said to them go into all the world and preach the gospel I'm just about finished but this is what I, I like uh, in essence the Lord is saying listen okay I'm going to give you your chastisement your hardness of heart and, and, and this just refusing to believe your, your unbelief and hardness of heart but, but this is what I, and this is what I love about the Lord you know he could have said and so therefore because of your unbelief and your hardness of heart for it is impossible to please God and me because of your unbelief and your hardness of heart that uh, that drawback spirit I take no pleasure in it and so therefore I take no pleasure in you and you are dismissed I'm gonna find me some more disciples but he didn't do that did he hallelujah you you know we all ought to be thanking God because we thought you know why because far too many of us fall into the category of still being unbelieving and hardness of heart. 
just stubborn, just stubborn. If you can't have, if you can't believe like you want to believe, you can't go in the direction you want to go in the direction. Lord, this is what the, the, no, no, sometimes, sometimes the Lord has a different direction for you to go. Amen? He says, go. I, that's the first thing I like uh, and, and something that I want to challenge us. In our area, yes, uh, we've been, some of us struggling, all of us from time to time struggling with our level or our, in the area of faith, in the area of forsaking all I trust him. I use that as an acronym for faith, F, forsaking, A, all, I, T, trust, him. Many of us struggle in that forsaking all and trusting him. But after hearing enough word and being encouraged, I pray that enough of us come on the side of a believer. We said, okay, but with all, I struggle, I struggle, and sometimes I still have my questions, but I'm going to trust the Lord. I'm a trust now, a part of trusting the Lord means that I've got to listen to his directives. And in his directives, the first thing he's saying is go. Go is, is suggesting a new direction. The old direction was let's still examine the tomb. That was the old direction. Go on. The tomb, yeah, he actually is. He actually is gone. Well, let's look around the grave and see if somebody just dropped his body somewhere. That, that's the old direction. But go now is suggesting a new direction because you're following a new headship. It's not, you're no longer sitting on the throne. Uh, we had that uh, on last week, but you're allowing Christ to sit on the throne. Amen? He says, go into all the world. So he's giving me new direction and new destination. So it has nothing to do with hanging out with the dead. But I want you to go, hallelujah, I want you to go to the world. Those that are, are still trying to live, they don't even know how yet to live. They've embraced or some of them have been caught up in the world system and, and they're preoccupied with their flesh and they're listening to the promptings of Satan. But that's the group that I want you, disciples of mine, and you're not going to act like the world, but you're going to go out with a word to the world. What? Because what is else does it say? It says, go into all the world and then do what? And preach. This is thoughtful uh, uh, dissertation. So I want you to open your mouth and I want you to share. Uh, and you're just not running your mouth. You're re even when you open your mouth and you don't think you're prepared, but you're saying, God, you feel my lips. You feel my mouth. Somebody give the Lord a praise. <laughs> Go into all the world preach and just in case you wanted to know what I wanted you to preach what I this thoughtful dissertation because you've been uh, allowing it to just impact your life I want you to preach the gospel somebody say the gospel uh, the gospel uh, is uh, good news uh, it's not a choir singing. Uh, it, it's not, uh, mu no, that's not, there is a gospel, uh, if you will, a genre called gospel music, but that's not uh, what we're talking about. We're talking about the good news. Well, what's the good news? That the grave didn't hold Jesus down. That Jesus overcame the grave and death. Come on, somebody give the Lord a praise. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, and who to preach it to? To every creature. To every creature. So uh, sometimes we have a, a temptation. Uh, we just want to preach to our own folk. We just listen. No, he he, he created uh, uh, people, creatures in different shades. Say we're in different shades. We're in different shades in this room. Amen. And so what happens is, and so sometimes what we'll do is we, we'll witness to somebody, but they have to kind of look like us. So, no, preach it to everybody, every creature. Uh, just share a word. You just don't know where people are, what they're wrestling with, and they need to hear some good news. Somebody give the Lord a praise. He says to every creature, verse 16, and he who believes and is baptized will be saved, but he who does not believe will be condemned. So disciples, uh, listen, that's why you got to come out of that uh, unbelief state uh, because uh, if you're going to follow me or anybody's going to follow me, they must believe. Amen? 
and then there must be a public demonstration. Ah, baptized. There must be a public demonstration of what they believe. If they believe in me, yes, I want them to publicly announce it to the world that I belong to Jesus. And they will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. And this is where I want to finish up. And these signs, hallelujah, will follow those who believe. Uh, listen, in essence, disciples, if you go forth and you, you go into all the world and you preach and you preach what I tell you to preach, the good news that I've risen for, I've conquered death and the grave. Death, where's thy sting? Grave, where's thy victory? And I want you to know, let them know that all power has been given to me in heaven and earth. And I am giving you the keys to the kingdom. He says, listen, I, I, I want you to know, uh, disciples, if you go forth and you share that nice message, I like this. I like to put it like this. Jesus says, and I will back you up. So, I'll back you up. Verse 17, and with these signs, and these signs will follow those who believe in my name. Hallelujah. I like that. In my name, will, they will cast out demons. Didn't we talk about that just a minute ago? Uh, see, some of us have been allowing the devil, or not so much even the devil, because the devil cannot, he is not the antithesis of just the opposite of God. He is a created being. He is not equal to God and just evil. God is God, God Almighty. There is none like God. God is not a created being. God has no start, has no end. The devil has a start and has an end. But since the devil, listen, and the God occupies all space at the same time, uh, and uh, omnipresent is he, uh, Satan walks, the Bible says, he even says, to and fro. He's walking. So what he does, though, he, when he was kicked out of heaven, uh, one third of heaven went, followed him. So uh, and these demons now, uh, I believe that Satan assigns demons. So, so for some of you, what has been, what has been, uh, if you will, something that has been plaguing you? Is it lust that's been plaguing you? That, that's a demon that needs to be cast out. Uh, is it an anger demon that causes you to just go off? That demon needs to be cast out. Is it a stingy demon? That demon needs to be cast out. Is it a prideful demon? That demon, whatever the demons are, listen, you have the ability to cast them. What does it say? It says, and these signs will follow on those who believe in my name. They will cast, cast what? Say, cast what? I like that word, O-U-T. What is it? Demons, you got to go. Cast the demon no, uh, no, 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 no. Now, faith comes through hearing and hearing by the word of God. So we're giving you the word of God, but I need you all to speak up. You need to talk like you got some conviction. Wake, wake your neighbor up. We're going to cast those demons. Ah, woo. Come on, come on, come on, yes. Now, I, I, I like it if everybody uses that word. So, and, and let's lift it up. We're going to cast the demons. We don't want them in this church. They come in here. They try to, right, they try to lurk around, but we cast the demon. They're trying to mess in your home, and there might be a number. However many people are living in the home, there might be a demon for every person, but then there might be several demons dealing with that. But when you're in that house, look at here. When you drive up into your house, you want to cast that devil and you might have to yell it out your, 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 and wake up whoever's in the house. We're casting the demons out. They got to, come on, give the Lord a praise. I said we're in warfare. Some of us have a sleepy, sorrowful demon make you sleep when we're in the midst of a sermon. But we're going to cast that demon 
You look over to your side and make sure your neighbor's not nodding. Not the, this is not the time to be yawning, huh? Because we're in the midst of casting the demon. Casting the demons. They got to go. It's got to go. What? Out! Come on, give the Lord a praise. And this is the thing. When we go in there, we're not operating in our own strength. We're not operating in our own power. Jesus is already telling them, he's already letting them know, I will back you up because you're doing this not in your name, but in... Hallelujah. 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 Come on, give him some glory. I'm going to teach you. He says, they will speak with new tongues. I'm going to give you a prayer language. So, hallelujah, glory to God. You start speaking in new tongues. Devil can't understand what in the world you're talking about. But, but, but also, I'm going to give you the ability to go beyond just your ethnicity and be able to speak to other individuals and give them the gospel of God. Do you know, do you know there are those that are from uh, Africa that uh, I would have thought would have been struggling with my presentation because of the English that we speak. But, but yet one of the mothers said, it's almost as if I'm back home. Uh, it, it's really just the Holy Ghost. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Ah, oh, oh, but, but, but we're just about finished. He says, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. So, so if they pick up Paul, he was just working and, and, uh, and didn't know that there was a serpent in the wood in the kindling, but uh, in, uh, the viper bites him. But uh, Paul saw the thing, and some of you all know the story. He just had more kindling to pick up, so he shook it off. Meaning when the devil tries to latch onto you and stop the forward momentum, the work that you're doing, just shake him off. Somebody give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ah, thank you. Shake him off. Come on, just practice. Shake him off. Because we're casting the devil. Shake him off. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. If I drink anything deadly, how might I do that? Well, somebody trying to poison the messenger. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because the devil has come to kill still. But the Lord says, listen, it will by no means hurt them. They will, and I like this. I like not only the protection that the Lord is giving, but then when they, they will lay hands on the sick. Can you just put your hand on the head of the neighbor next to you? And in the name of Jesus, be healed. Because you, you see, I, I think it's, I think it's, I, I think it's wonderful. I think it's wonderful that we have an altar call and ask people to come up. But wouldn't it be just so much uh, uh, just better that you could just tell, lean over to your neighbor and say, just, I'm, I'm feeling a pressure headache. I'm feeling something. Just lay hands on me and say, be healed. Because mm. as I finish, hallelujah, glory to God. What time? All right. I'm just thinking about the name of Jesus. I've got to close out, but the name of Jesus gives us our identity. Give me those 10 points. The name of Jesus gives us our identity. In Acts 11 and 26, they were first, the disciples were called Christians first in Antioch. And so uh, who we are who we are attached to, who we are following, it's Jesus. Amen? 
But, but not only that, in Philippians 2, verses 9 through 11, uh, come on with me. Uh, Jesus' name is above every other name. Okay, good. So, all right, good. Stop. So, his name. So, uh, every knee shall bow and every... Hallelujah. That Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. That's Philippians 2, 9 through 11. But, but not only does it give us our identity, not only is his name above every name, but it's through his name that we get what we need from God. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whosoever, whatsoever ye ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hallelujah. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name. Ask and ye shall receive that your joy may be full. In his name, it carries every authority, everything that Jesus is. So he's a healer in Mark 16. Through, he's a protector. He's a provider. Hallelujah. Five, his name is at work continuously. At work continuously. In Matthew 28 and 20, he says, he tells us to go into the uttermost part, and lo, I am with you always. His name is understood and feared by the enemy. In Matthew 8, 29, I hear the uh, enemy shrieks, what have you done, uh, what have you to do with us, Jesus, son of God? Have you come to torment us before the appointed time? His name is, Jesus is a strong refuge in Proverbs 18 and 10. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and are safe. His name commands instant deliverance. There was one who had been bedridden for eight years and paralyzed, and Peter said to him, Jesus the Christ heals you. Make up your bed. Brother gets up and walks. The power in the name of Jesus is evoked through faith. So if we want to see the movement of God through his son, we've got to believe. And that's why the enemy is trying to cause us not to believe. The lame man at the temple gates, as the disciples said, silver and gold have we none, but such as we have, get up and walk. And then lastly, as I prepare to close out, we're qualified to use his name only if we're born again. There was in Acts 19, verses 13 through 17, the seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew, who uh, they were impressed that the disciples could, and Paul, that they could preach and the uh, demons would respond. So they decided they were going to try to do the same thing. And the demon, the evil spirit said, uh, Jesus I know and Paul I know, but who are you? Everyone standing. In my name, in the name of Jesus. The songwriter put it, we've got the victory. In the name of Jesus, Satan has got to flee. In the name of Jesus. Sometimes, sometimes we don't even use the, it's almost like we'll say, in the name of Jesus be cast out. Sometimes or in the name of Jesus the Christ, but sometimes we all we can do is just yell out, Jesus. And now, the Lord doesn't want us to use it in vain. When you call on the name, you're wanting to see Jesus' divine intervention come into that situation and make a difference. And so you're calling out and he knows what's going on in your heart. So when you walk into a situation and you know it's chaos and you know the enemy has gotten too busy and you just call on the name of Jesus. Somebody try to rob you or stick you up in the name of Jesus. I bind you, Satan, and I cast you out. If there's one that does not know Jesus as Lord and Savior, 
We want you to be in right relationship. We want you to be a believer so that when you call on the name of Jesus, the Lord will respond. The only time, the only thing that you could right now do in calling on the name of Jesus is for salvation. Wanting to be saved. Jesus, save me. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I'm going to come down, but if there's anyone here who doesn't have an assurance that heaven is their home, don't, don't make the mistake of leaving here without him. I'm coming down now. Thank you for joining our broadcast today. For additional information, please visit us on our website, our Facebook page, or Twitter. 